I mean, lots of expectations about the prospect of a new country in Africa. And I know that Ati River has been actively involved in the last four years in southern Sudan. Are you optimistic about the future for this uh, country? Absolutely. <clears throat> southern Sudan uh, is probably uh, one of the newest countries uh, in Africa, of course, but it sits on a vast uh, reserves of oil. It has got five billion uh, barrels of oil reserve. It sits on the Nile. It's got a lot of potential for hydropower. It has got all the minerals which uh, we could hope for. It's got gold, silver, iron, nickel, so on and so forth. Uh, country which uh, in terms of resources is right there at the top. Abundant resources uh, starting from the very beginning. So yes, in terms of pure potential, we are quite excited about South Sudan and we hope to look at that country in the near future. Now, Ati River has been quoted in the media as saying that your projections for growth in Southern Sudan, somewhere in the region of 20% to 25%, whereas the World Bank sees the regional average at 6.5%. Um, what would make Southern Sudan beat the, the regional average on growth? Well, one is, uh, of course, that we are starting from virtually a base which is very low. Uh, if you look at it, uh, we would have to build the roads, we'll have to build the dams for the power, we'll have to build the hospitals, we'll have to build the pipe, uh, uh, water supply system in the country, we'll have to buy, uh, build the sewage systems, we'll have to build virtually everything. Now you must remember that Southern Sudan is one of the most underdeveloped countries, not only in Africa, uh, I would probably say it's probably one of the most underdeveloped countries in the world at the moment. And in terms of uh, the pure potential, the amount of work which we have to do to get that country up and running, build the infrastructure, build the roads, build the dams, build the houses, build the uh, ministries, etc. Tremendous potential and therefore I see that uh, because it's starting from a low base, the growth potential in that country would be very, very high. All right, let's talk about Ati River and your strategy into the rest of Sudan. So far, you've been involved in the distribution of cement. Are there plans to invest by way of a, a cement plant, factories, those kinds of things? Uh, in uh, principle, yes, it would make uh, it interesting for us to invest in that country if the opportunity comes in. Uh, the demand for cement is going to be high in our mind because to build whatever infrastructure or roads or houses etc you would need cement so in terms of pure potential yes it's a country where we would like to go into however we must remember that this is a country which is just getting independent probably in july the state would be created going forward we would need to ensure that the political systems are in place the financial systems are in place the governance systems are in place etc etc before it becomes a viable opportunity for investment. So we'll have to look at that factors before we decide to mm. go in and put in a unit there. Okay, just looking at trends, because obviously you've made a very strong investment case for infrastructure, but we do know that the cement manufacturing industry has done fairly well in Kenya and within the sub-region, consumption increasing over 14%, but there are still challenges. Challenges of capacity, uh, challenges of broadening distribution networks. How are you trying to address these challenges as they apply to you in Kenya and East Africa and then to uh, help you leapfrog into Southern Sudan? Well, I think in terms of capacity, uh, it's quite, uh, uh, it's very simple for us. We are putting in clinker capacity. Now, the East African region as of today is a deficit of clinker. In short term, we expect it to the demand and the supply situation to balance long term we would again expect a shortage of clinker capacity now we are putting in clinker capacity most of the other capacities which have come up in the region are grinding capacities so to that extent our strategy is to put up clinker capacity so that we can continue to service the markets with cement made from our own clinker in terms of distribution yes it's a big challenge the only way you can uh, meet this challenge is by being innovative, by building long-term partnerships with your logistics suppliers to ensure that your product can reach not only Kenya, but also other potential export markets where you want to enter into. Okay, I know that uh, Ati River is planning to sort of separate its core cement business from other areas such as your fertilizer and uh, mining operations. Um, how is this going to enable you to sort of streamline your investments in a country like southern Sudan? Or would you want to be able to you know, expand your tentacles and all the various areas of your competitive advantage to find investments in all stakes? 
Well, the very purpose of uh, uh, dividing the company into two and uh, having a a uh, cement division separate and a non-cement division separate, which is the minerals and chemicals, is to have focused professional management teams which can look at every opportunity independent of the other businesses. Now, if the cement business finds opportunities in Southern Sudan or for the matter of fact in any other market, they would look at it separately. Now, at the same time, you know, the other products which we manufacture are also going to be in demand uh, in, uh, in any other country, including Southern Sudan. Now, our strategy would be that the management teams of the two divisions look at the opportunities separately and independently, and if the opportunity exists there for them, they will go into this uh, diversification.